Welcome to The Extreme Underground, the show where I take a look at some of the most disturbing and controversial films in the world of cinema. Today we'll be talking about Guinea Pig 3, He Never Dies. This is the third entry into the infamous guinea pig franchise, a Japanese series that was started in the 80s that people were convinced were real snuff films. As we jump into this third movie, it's almost a comedy. I know it's weird to say when talking about the guinea pig series, but I was laughing out loud at some of the moments in this movie. Because the basic concept is our main character, Hideshi, is depressed and wants to kill himself and finds out that he can't be killed like the title suggests. So this film with only 40 minutes runtime is Hideshi playing with the fact that he is now immortal. So unlike the first two entries, this is the first film that seems to have more of like a narrative story. We first meet Rick Steinberg. He's a scientist talking about UFOs and the unexplained. And he's got a really interesting story and that we're about to watch it together. So it starts off with Hideshi trying to kill himself. He tries to slit his wrist, but he can't bring himself to do it. So he continues on with his life. He puts on a record and then we go to the title screen. He works an office job at a computer company. His boss seems to hate him. The girl that he may like is hooking up with another guy at work and he's basically just a pushover and people just like hand off their work to him because they've got something better to do and he doesn't. For some reason it cuts back to the scientist and he just basically says exactly what I just said. And then it cuts to a TV screen where Hideshi is just bored and he's like playing with the characters on the television pretty awkwardly. Like he's slowly going stir crazy because he's not leaving his house. So he's just doing what he can to entertain himself. He plays the guitar. He draws people on his feet and has conversations with them. After he's done doing everything that he can do, he eventually just like stands there. He's bored and decides to try and slice his wrist again. This time he's successful. Successful. He takes an X-Acto blade and he cuts right through his wrist and it's really disturbing. It looks extremely graphic. The practical effects are really well done and he believes he's just killed himself. So he sits down and he's just happy. He's happy he finally was able to overcome some of the pain that he had and some of the fears that he had from before. And now he can finally die and just rest in peace. But unfortunately, he realizes that he stops bleeding and he's not bleeding out and he's not going to die and he doesn't feel any pain whatsoever. To test this theory, he decides to grab a pen and stick it right through his arm, which looks awesome. But again, he feels no pain. Then he pulls it out and it looks great, but he's so frustrated and he questions like, why can I not die? The next test he takes is to cut his own hand off which he does successfully, but again, he stops bleeding. He hilariously throws it over his shoulder because he's just trying to test things out. He then takes a knife and slits his own neck. Again, nothing. And at this point, you can see his frustration and you know damn well this is a comedy movie. Well, it does have extreme elements, it's certainly not that disturbing aside from the actual like incisions. He ends up taping his hand back on and then has some delusions of people at his work. Uh, many of the girls just saying they wouldn't want to get with him. They couldn't marry one of their coworkers, eventually leading them to say like, hey, you need to kill yourself. He tries to call for help, so he called the emergency line first and he explains the situation and they're just not buying it. So he calls his friend Nakamura, a coworker, who had gone home with another coworker that night and he asked him to bring various tools to his house, like some garden shears and a hatchet. And for some reason, Nakamura is just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so he brings a bunch of tools over. When he walks in, Hideshi pranks him by acting like a zombie. He's got like a math triangle stuck in his head as he slowly approaches him. Nakamura is obviously freaking out. He's losing his mind, just watching his friend act this way before Hideshi grabs a knife and cuts open his stomach. He starts pulling out his intestines and throwing them on Nakamura. Whether it's a prank or not, I would be pissed because you're getting your fucking intestines all over me. Even though he's having fun doing what he's doing, like does he not think this is disgusting for Nakamura? Like, can you not? He begs him to stop and then eventually just passes out. All the while, Kyoko, the woman who came with Nakamura, she's just sitting in the car, just waiting for him to come out. And then this is the weirdest scene. Nakamura is screaming as the screen like keeps flipping from side to side as Hideshi comes in with a hatchet in his head using the garden shears, which is actually the poster shot for the film. Kyoko decides to investigate and is greeted by Hideshi's head sitting on the table talking. For some reason, she doesn't seem phased by this at all. She's just like, oh, Nakamura, what's going on? Like she's just completely ignoring that there is a decapitated head sitting on the coffee table. She doesn't care. She just tells Nakamura that they need to clean up and they start to wipe down the table. And then it cuts to the scientist to kind of wrap things up and say, well, 
How'd you feel about that? And as the credits roll, we see all of the gore scenes in reverse with a mid credit scene where it just shows Nakamura tickling Hideshi's feet. They're just having a blast. And that's the whole movie. This was such a weird film, especially coming off the last two. While the first guinea pig is actually disturbing, the second guinea pig is a little bit more comedic because we have like a weird samurai guy doing some crazy stuff. And it does have a little bit more of a story because he's building to some collection. But this one is just so off the rails. It's a comedy movie with some gore. He's invincible, he's trying to kill himself, so yes, it's super dark and there's blood everywhere, but Hideshi eventually finds happiness in trying to kill himself and dismembering his own body. It's well shot, the practical effects are amazing, but it's not like the best movie. It's a fun enough time, but nothing really happens. I don't think we needed the rapper with the scientist because he didn't really add anything interesting to the film. He just summed up what we had already seen. I don't know. It's not the best, it's not the worst. I had fun watching it and I I did laugh, but I can't give this a high rating just because it's like a single punchline for 40 minutes and basically acts like another special effects showpiece. So I'm gonna give this two and a half terrible dart players out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything here on the Extreme Underground.